Mr. President, I rise today to speak to an issue relative to the nation of Ukraine. It is the continued imprisonment of former Ukrainian Prime Minister Ms. Yulia Tymoshenko. Sadly, for over two years now, Ms. Tymoshenko has been languishing in prison on politicized charges that she abused her position in connection with the natural gas contract with Russia. This is a floor poster showing the former Prime Minister's trial in Ukraine. This occurred, as I said, more than two years ago. I'm not going to judge the wisdom of that contract. One of my endless series of policy decisions that chief executives make in most nations. But this is an imprisonment that has been recognized by the international community and countless human rights organizations and by the European Court on Human Rights as selective prosecution and politically motivated. This is an imprisonment that has the whiff of the neighboring nation of Belarus, where those who run for president against strongman dictator Alexander Lukashenko not only always lose the election, but virtually always get thrown in jail. Talk about a disincentive to run for office. Not in Ukraine, which has looked to solidify its, for, its uh, place among the community of democracies, do we expect this kind of conduct. When I visited Ukraine last May, I had the opportunity to meet with President Yanukovych, the Prime Minister, and the Foreign Minister. I was grateful that they gave me their time. And during those discussions, I always raised the issue of Ms. Tymoshenko's imprisonment, hoping that it would be solved. They gave me kind of indirect assurances that it would in a very brief time. Last year, Senator Inhofe of Oklahoma, Senators Boxer, Casey, Menendez, and I introduced a Senate resolution calling for her release. It passed unanimously last September, over a year ago. And yet here we are today, more than a year later, and a few weeks before an important opportunity for Ukraine to strengthen its ties to the West by potentially signing an association agreement with the European Union, and Ms. Tymoshenko is still in jail. Mr. President, this is not only embarrassment, embarrassing, it's disgraceful. This is a costly distraction from all the other important issues in Ukraine, a nation which has such a great potential. It plays into Russian President Putin's hands, who would like nothing more than to see the European Union Association Agreement scuttled because of the failure of the Ukrainian government to release Ms. Tymoshenko. Why would Ukraine's leaders want to succumb to Russian bullying and jeopardize stronger economic and political ties to the West over a simple grudge regarding a previous prime minister? Mr. President, I'm dismayed by the seeming inability to find a reasonable compromise that would allow Ms. Tymoshenko to be released to seek medical treatment abroad, a move that would allow us to instead focus on strengthening the important ties between the U.S., the European Union, and Ukraine. Ukraine is our friend and ally. It helped us in Libya and in Afghanistan. Its leadership rightly sees Ukraine's future with the West. But when you join the community of democracies, you simply do not throw away your, you not, simply do not throw your former political opponents in jail over policy disagreements. You instead offer better ideas and beat them in an election. That's why this summer, regrettably, I introduced a follow-up resolution, again calling for the release of Ms. Timoshenko. I'm happy to note Senators Barrasso, Bozeman, Boxer, Cardin, Inhofe, Menendez, Murphy, Portman, Rubio, Sessions, and Shaheen have joined me. And let me add, that's not a group of senators that you see agree on too many issues, but we all agree on this. For months, we've been waiting, assured that a resolution to Ms. Tymoshenko's case would come to fruition. We saw Ukraine take promising steps toward political reform. We saw some of Ms. Tymoshenko's allies pardoned. And over the course of the last few weeks in particular, we were optimistic in negotiations led by former President of the European Parliament, Pat Cox, and former Polish President, Alexander Kwasniewski, were seemingly making headway toward a solution in which Ms. Tymoshenko would, lead, would leave, go to Germany for medical treatment. We were hopeful that such a solution could come in time for Ukraine to sign an association agreement with the EU during the Eastern Partnership Summit in Vilnius at the end of this month, a step strongly supported by the United States. We held off in calling this resolution with the hope that real progress would take place. But last Wednesday, after two years of delay and obfuscation on this issue, the Ukrainian parliament postponed a vote on the bill that would have secured this resolution, a move that only adds to the long, long list of missed opportunities in Ukraine. 
That is why today, with dis some disappointment, my colleagues and I have decided to move forward and have passed this resolution in the United States Senate. There is still time to find a solution before the Eastern Partnership Summit takes place at the end of the month. So I'm hopeful that our friends in Ukraine will be able to find an honorable way forward that puts the best interest of their country first and ends Ms. Timoshenko's detention.